I'm here in the Philippines visiting my virtual assistant and hiring a virtual assistant is one of the best things I've done for my business. It's, it's been so helpful that I actually flew Dan out here, my virtual assistant, to Palawan, which is a beautiful island right here in the Philippines. We're gonna be exploring it. And while we explore Palawan, I'm gonna give you my top 10 secrets for hiring virtual assistants. Let's get into the tactics. Dan lives in Manila and I actually flew him out here. We're staying at this beautiful hotel, which is actually pretty affordable. And so right off the bat, I wanna give you the first secret, which is if you're gonna be hiring a virtual assistant, I recommend going to onlinejobs.ph. That's where I hired Dan, that's where I've hired all my VAs. There are a lot of other sites out there. Onlinejobs.ph seems to be one of the most affordable ones. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the hotel and then we're gonna go get some lunch and I'll give you the next secret. Make sure to test your VAs before you hire them. Now, I do this from the very beginning. When I post my job, anyone that applies to the job, the only way they can apply is by changing the subject line to something very specific. I have a full vlog video where I actually go step-by-step step how I hired a virtual assistant, and I'll put a link up here and down below for that. But another tip on top of that is before you, even after that next tip, give them a sample project see if they're a good fit. I give my VAs a sample project before I even interview them. That's part of the interviewing process is they have to do a sample project. And if they don't do a good job, I save both of us some time and I don't do an interview because I know I'm not gonna hire them. When you do finally go to interview your potential virtual assistants, make sure you do a Skype call or a Zoom call with video. There's a few different reasons why you wanna do it with video. One is to check their internet speed. If their internet speed isn't good enough to handle video, then there might be issues, they might complain later when working with you that their internet speed isn't fast enough. So that's the first thing, you'll test their internet speed. But on top of that, it's also gonna make sure that they are who they say they are, that you feel comfortable. And I think that's a really important tip is the gut check. When you are interviewing them with video, how do you feel? Like what does your gut tell you? Because one thing I've learned over and over again, the most important thing is what your gut says about the person. When it comes time to interview your VA, there is a few different questions I recommend asking. What is their internet speed? What part of the Philippines do they live in? This will also tell you how good their internet connection is. In the Philippines, a lot of times the internet will go out. So that's a big question to ask. Some other questions that are obvious are like prior experience, but one of the most important questions I like to ask is if there's anyone throughout history that you can meet, who would it be and why? And the reason for this is I wanna see how well the virtual assistants can think on their toes. Some other questions you should ask is, why do they wanna work for you? I think a lot of people skip this question, but it's important, why do they wanna do this job for you? Is it something they're passionate about? And a similar related question to that is, what do they wanna be doing five years from now? Like, What is their five year goal? And as much as I hated this question in the corporate world, I now understand why they ask it. It's important to see, does your job offer align with what they wanna be doing in the future? Because if it doesn't, they're not gonna be as passionate about it, they're not gonna be as interested in doing it. Like I think I said before, I do have a complete step-by-step how-to guide up here and down below in the e-commerce success pack. There is step-by-step -step how to hire a virtual assistant, including all the questions I asked during interviews, all the email templates, job templates, everything I use. And you can get that for free by clicking up here or down below in the e-commerce success pack. The truth is there's not a lot to do in Puerto Princesa. It is the easiest town in Palawan to fly into. So that's why we're going to Honda Bay, which is a beautiful beach town right now. And of course, I'll continue to give you some secrets on how to hire a virtual assistant. One thing people get hung up when hiring a virtual assistant is what should the virtual assistant do? And I often get asked, what tasks do I give to my virtual assistant? And the truth is you can give them almost anything. Except for very high level things, you can give almost anything to your VA, including social media, writing articles, uh, video editing. Right now, all this video is being edited by Dan, the guy that's my VA that's in this video. I also have my VAs do customer support because most customer support is pretty repetitive. People complain about a box, they wanna return it. And there's a pretty standard template that my virtual assistants follow to do the return. Even booking hotels and flights 
and doing research. Like I'll have all my virtual assistants go and find influencers in the keto space for my product, Performance Nut Butter. But let's have Dan tell you himself what he does for me. And he's working 40 hours a week. Edit videos for the YouTube channel. Uh, make thumbnails for those videos. Managing the VAs and hiring VAs. Posting articles on the website. Uh, replying to uh, emails from the Effective E-Commerce inbox. Editing podcasts and posting it on iTunes and on the website. I outsource any task that is repetitive. If I do it more than once, I write out step by step how to do it and I give it to my VA. Even if it'll take my VAs longer to do it than it'll take me, it's worth it because an hour of my time is a lot more valuable than it's gonna cost to pay a virtual assistant to do it, even if it takes them three times as long. It's important from day one to give your VAs a handbook with all the rules for working with you. I have about 20 different things that I ask of my VAs and these are things that I've learned over time that you need to do. For example, within 24 hours, if I send you Email. During work days, within 24 hours, if I send them an email, I want some kind of a response. I've had VAs in the past where a few days go by and I'm like, hey, did you ever get that email? And sometimes I even forget that I send it to them until a week or two later when it's a crunch time and I need that response. Another rule I have for my VAs is that if I give them a task, it must either be completed within 24 hours if it's a small task, or if it's a bigger task, it needs to be added to Asana or Trello or some other management platform which is another one of the secrets. Make sure you use some kind of a management platform. I personally use Asana. And the way it works is you can put tasks into Asana and they can be assigned to different people. That way you can track that task that you gave to your VA. Has it been completed or not? Yesterday, Ariana and I went to Noctabon Beach, which is a beautiful beach here in Palawan. And Adrian actually wanted to go see the underground river, which is supposedly a must-see thing when you're in Puerto Princesa. But to be honest, Ariana and I just wanted a chill day, so we did not go do that. But anyways, back to the secrets. The next secret that's important to remember is on day one, you should have what I call a day one orientation sheet. So this is a Google Doc that lists everything that your VA should be doing from day one. And on it are things like sign up for Hubstaff. And Hubstaff is a tool that I use to record how long my VAs are working for me, like they can log their hours, but it also takes random screenshots of their screen and I can check these. And I, I rarely check these, I usually trust my VAs, but if I think something's up, I will check them. And I've caught my virtual assistants working for other people, working on other people's assignments, but yet trying to charge me for it. And obviously if that happens, I fire them immediately. It also includes things like downloading Dropbox and setting up Dropbox. And Dropbox is a great way to share screen recordings. It's also a great way to share any kind of files, especially my video editors. I'll share all my video files via Dropbox. They'll get them, they'll edit my videos. Another tool I use is LastPass, and this is a great way to share passwords. My VAs will create their own LastPass account. I'll give them access to all my passwords, but it's encrypted, so they can't actually see the password. The plugin just puts it in automatically. So this way, if I need to let them go, I can just remove them from LastPass, and I don't have to go change all my passwords. This is a crucial tool. This morning, Dan went to church, and Ariana and I are going to a local mall to get some coffee and hang out before our flight to El Nido. By the way, this is Jollibee, which is the most famous fast food restaurant in the Philippines. It's actually more famous than McDonald's. Every kid knows what Jollibee is. Jollibee is famous for their fried chicken and also their spaghetti. Yeah, seriously, the spaghetti is a big deal here. So here, this is the first bite. I'm gonna try out the Jollibee fried chicken. Kind of similar to KFC, but a little bit finer breading. Which brings me to the next secret, and it's related to rituals. As you notice, as I said, Dan goes to church every day in the Philippines. And as a reminder, religion is pretty important here in the Philippines. A lot of, there's a huge Catholic community uh, because the Spanish actually colonized the Philippines for a while. But anyways, back to one of the secrets, and that's daily tasks. Rituals are important. You wanna make sure that your VAs know every day what they're supposed to do. And so I like to give my VAs tasks that they're supposed to do every day. And there's a lot of things that you probably do every day that you don't need to do. For instance, I have my VAs check my emails and answer any emails that they can answer before I even check it. That way I don't waste my time answering emails that are easily responded to. 
There's a lot of other things that my VAs do every day for me. And I'll let you think about your own things. Like look at your to-do list, look at what you do every day. And probably 90% of the things that you do that are repetitive, you don't need to be doing, your VA could be doing. The food in the Philippines is pretty unhealthy. There's sugar added to everything, lots of oils. So pro tip, I actually went to the grocery store, I got an avocado, some broccoli, and just ordered some grilled chicken. It's a good way to eat healthy on the road. I also have a bonus tip, and if you haven't noticed throughout this whole video, I've been alluding to this bonus tip, and that is treat them good. If you're hiring virtual assistants, they can go work for someone else, they can quit, and it's a pain in the butt to have to hire a new virtual assistant. So instead, if you just treat your virtual assistants good, and that might mean, you know, giving them bonuses, giving them pay raises, or like I did, flying out to go see them and actually flying them out for a virtual assistant retreat. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it's important to remember that they're people, they're smart, and that you need to treat them good. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, remember to enjoy the journey.